We have seen quite a bit of rain and some flooding in the last month. You may not have made the connection, but some scientists say climate change could have something to do with this. And a surprising new study finds that Florida stands to lose a lot more than any other state on the mainland. The Union of Concerned Scientists says that by 2045, nearly 64,000 homes will face flooding every other day. They are basing this on flood models from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NOAA predicts six and a half feet of sea rise by the end of the century. Scientists behind the report say this could create a housing crisis like we have never seen before. They say the Bay Area is one of the most vulnerable within the next 30 years. So what would that look like for you? 10 News reporter Bianca Grollo talked to scientists to find out. This is what the Tampa Riverwalk looks like in 2017. This is what scientists say it could look like in 2100 if the sea level rises four feet. This is not even the worst case scenario. This is. Now, of course, this is a projection for the future, but it's based on the climate change effects we're seeing today. In the Tampa Bay area, we have a tide gauge. We have several tide gauges. That have been measuring sea level for over 70 years. That's how experts know sea level is rising, and that it has been rising at a faster pace in the last couple of decades. And scientists have found we are to blame. The rate of increase of the greenhouse gases is far beyond anything we've observed in the historical or geological record over 500,000 years. So a quick refresher, the greenhouse gases we produce trap too much heat from the sun and send it back to Earth. The planet's temperature goes up, the ice caps melt, and the sea level increases. Surprisingly, some people still try to deny the science, but those studying it... It is real. And those pushing for solutions... We're talking about things that we can measure here. ...want to move on to talk about the urgency of taking action. Over 100 years, sea level rise is going to be a deep, serious problem for St. Pete. But in the meantime, rainfall patterns are changing as well. All the way up to about here. Down. It's not hard to find the people already dealing with the consequences. You know, there's nowhere for these ditches for these to drain. Despite a four feet ditch, Margie DeSantis gets flooding almost every time it rains. And because of climate change, it is raining more often and heavier in some regions. So we're kind of right on the cusp of the ocean. Margie lives north of the MacDill Air Force Base. This is what scientists predict could happen to her neighborhood by 2100. But this prediction could change for the worse if we increase the rate of our gas emissions. It's more likely that these numbers are going to be going up than going down. Are you getting increasingly alarmed because of the changes? The people I talk to are increasingly alarmed. You know, the scientists have been talking about this for a long time. We may not be around to see the worst of it. Why do I care? I have kids. They probably won't be living in the house I'm living in because we're, I think I only have six feet. But um, at least they'll be living in St. Pete. But in the meantime, in Tampa Bay, we have a front row seat of the preview of what's to come. Bianca Grillo, 10 News. Yeah, we're thinking about our kids. We're thinking about the future yeah. in our area. Now, recently, a NASA senior scientist came to Tampa Bay to talk about this, and you had a chance to speak with him. I did. So his name is Dr. Timothy Hall, and he came to talk about just how dangerous rising sea levels are becoming, especially for us here in the Tampa Bay area. It turns out that Tampa is one of the most, possibly the most vulnerable city in the U.S. for surge hazard. It's serious. It's, it's enough for people to be really concerned to live in coastal communities and to take action to both adapt and to try to get off the worst case scenario curve. So when it comes to solutions, there are good news and bad news. The good news is that according to today's report, if we stick to the goal of the Paris Agreement of not exceeding those two degrees Celsius by the end of the century, most of the homes at risk in Florida could be saved. The bad news, Allison, is that as we know, the U.S. pulled out of the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. And some say we've already exceeded that point of no return, and we're not going to reach that goal. And so we really just have to focus on minimizing the effect of what is to come. And that is what government officials are talking about mm -hmm. right now. All right, Bianca, thank you.